السلام عليكم أوتيز ماي نيم إز حفص إبراهيم أي أم إنكيبيشن أتربس إن سلطان بن عبد العزيز ومانيتيريان سيتي توداي أم غانا توك أباوت فيجوال فيلدز أند فيجوال نيكلكتس بروبلمز فور بيشنتس بيفور وي ستارت فيرست وي هاف تو توك أباوت ذا فيجن وات إز ذا فيجن فيجن هاز تو كومبوننتس أور تو بارتس The first part of the vision is called eyesight or vision sight. It uh, it contains the eyes and the optic nerve. It means the ability of the eye to see the light and to feel the object, to see the objects. The other part is the visual perception or the vision processing by the brain. And this is the part which is uh, important for This part of the vision is the uh, concern about the rehabilitation and uh, as the OTs we work on this uh, area. Uh, visual perception is the ability to interpret the surrounding environment by processing information that contains visible light. Also, the visual perception is the primary receptor for motor planning, postural control, cognition, communication and emotional function. Uh, ability to interact with all aspects of the environment including the people and the object within it and uh, also the visual perception is related with the proprioception vestibular system and postural control postural awareness and uh, of course impairment in visual perception it will affect the patient life it will affect the, uh, the activities of daily living This is the first part of the visual system, uh, the eye itself and the optic nerve, including the pupil. Any damage of this part uh, in the retina or the eye or the lens or the optic nerve, it's called peripheral vision impairment. The second part is the impairment after the optic nerve, which it is from the optic chiasm. This is the optic nerve and this is the So any damage after the optic chiasm and below, uh, it's called uh, cortical visual impairment. It's also called cerebral visual impairment or neurological visual impairment. Uh, this is the brain uh, and this is the eye, the optic nerve, and this is the optic tract and optic radiation. Uh, for the visual processing, there is Uh, primary visual cortex which is located in the occipital loop visual cortex is, is the responsible of processing and interpreting the uh, visual information which are coming from the eye when the information comes from the eye through the optic nerve to the visual cortex area it has two streams Uh, the first stream or the first area which is responsible for visual perception is the parietal loop. Uh, this is stream is called uh, wear, wear stream or dorsal stream. It is responsible of, uh, it is responsible of the vis spatial relationships, depth perception, uh, where is the object uh, you are seeing. The other stream is the ventral stream or we call it uh, what stream located in the temporal loop is responsible of uh, recognizing the object remembering the names uh, knowing what is this object so any damage in the parietal loop it will cause spatial relation problems depth perception problem And any damage in the temporal lobe, it causes agnosia. The patient doesn't know the name of the objects. These are the disorders that cause uh, visual perception impairment. Uh, now we will come to our topic, visual field. Uh, it is the ability to view the external world uh, without moving the eyes. The visual field, we have four uh, areas for the visual field there is central visual field or nasal visual field this is the nasal visual field the eye can see the area which is in the center or the middle 
and we have the temporal or the peripheral visual field which is 100 degree uh, to the right or to the left and there is the superior visual field 60 degrees and the inferior visual field 75 degrees uh, for the central visual field uh, it detects the details of the objects uh, and it is important for reading doing very near it is important for doing very near tasks like fine motor activities or uh, uh, any table activities uh, then the temporal visual field it detects the movement or the motion and it is very important for the safety the inferior visual field it is responsible of mobility uh, doing steps balance activity walking for the superior visual field loss it can cause problem in writing reading uh, doing fine motor activities and then uh, hemanomous uh, term it means uh, there is deficit in visual field in both eyes and hemanopsia means uh, there is deficit in uh, half of the visual field in both eyes in order to understand the visual field we need to look at the uh, structure of the eye and the brain this is the temporal half of the retina uh, and this is the nasal half of the retina so the temporal part of the retina is responsible of seeing the nasal visual field also for the other eye and the nasal area of the retina sees the peripheral visual field the other thing we have to know uh, the visual field is contralateral the right side of the visual field will be seen by the left side of the so what we have to know is that the left side the right side of the brain is responsible of seeing the left side of the environment and regarding the nasal part, it is for the both eyes. A visual field is considered as a cortical visual impairment, so the damage will come from the optic chiasm and below. Uh, so let's see uh, if we have damage in any of these areas, what, is, what will happen to the patient. For example, if we have cut or lesion in the optic nerve, what we will have? We will have blindness in the total blindness in that eye. If we have cut or lesion in this area, the temporal part of the retina, which is the nasal visual field, so the patient will lose the vision in the left side of the body and he will see only the right. In that case, it's called hemanomas, hemanobia. The patient cannot see the left part of the visual field. Uh, if we have damage in the optic chiasm cut here, so the patient he can see this part because it is in because it is intact, and also the nasal part of the other side it will be intact. So the patient. So the patient will see only the nasal visual field and blindness in the peripheral visual field. We'll come to the assessment for the visual field. We have an uh, assessment called confrontational test. For the confrontational test, you need the patient to be cooperative, cognitively good, or at least can follow commands. So to the patient, explain what you're going to do and ensure that your hands are clean. You should be seated directly in front of the patient. Your knees should be closed so that you and the patient are facing to each other at the same height. Instruct the patient that you would like them to look directly at you. Then stretch the patient and fingers pointing towards the ceiling. Ask the patient to point to the hand that then moves. This will identify any significant temporal field. Next, ask the patient to cover their left eye with the palm of their left hand. If the fingers are used instead, this can press on the eye and blur the, vision, and blur the vision when the left eye comes to be tested. You need to do the same unless you can comfortably close your left eye. Remember to see how many fingers they can see. You should present different numbers of fingers to the four essential quadrants of the visual field. 
Next, ask the patient to relax, hands down, blink and repeat as above on the left eye. For further refinement of this procedure, test each individual quadrant again on the right and the left eye using more sensitive and central defects can be looked for using a red pen. There, that's the basics. This is a very useful clinical skill. If we assess a patient and we discover that he or she has a visual field impairment, what will be our treatment? The good thing in uh, cortical visual impairment it is that it could be treated uh, by stimulating the visual area. Uh, also, the patient which which have cortical uh, visual impairment mostly mostly they are not aware of their problem. And some of the patients they would say that, uh, for example, I cannot see with the left eye or I cannot see with the right eye. So in order to treat the visual field impairment, the first step is to explain to the patient that he or she have a problem. Uh, one of the exercises we can give the patient is to improve the visual scanning toward the blind uh, uh, area and to train the patient to do uh, a lot of eye movement, a wide range of eye movement to compensate. We can change the patient's uh, bed place, uh, the table, the things that he or she is using to the blind side. Also, we can change the bed direction to make the unaffected side facing the wall and the affected side is facing the room. And also, we can treat the patient by um, asking the patient to try to uh, look for an object in the affected auditory verbal uh, cues in order to encourage the patient to, the, to look to the affected side. Now we will come to the compensatory techniques. This is if the patient uh, didn't benefit from the exercises or the training. The first thing is to educate the patient and the caregiver about the patient's problem. Uh, then we need to use and then we will need a lot of uh, prompting, uh, verbal cues to help the patient to be aware of the effect. Uh, place all the necess necessary items like comb, uh, anything the patient use in the non-affected side. And also we can use um, uh, like a strap, colors on the doors, furniture on the wall. This will help the patient to know if he is seeing the whole image or not. Uh, for now, my time is up. Uh, maybe I will try to schedule another time for visual neglection. Uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, anybody have any question can send me a message and I will answer, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is me again. I am Hafsa Ibrahim, an occupational therapist in Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Humanitarian City. Uh, today, inshallah, we are going to continue the presentation we did last week about visual perception and visual field. Uh, last week, we talked about visual perception and visual system and uh, fun uh, the function of the brain regarding the visual skills. Uh, today, inshallah, we, we are going to talk about visual attention and visual scanning. Before we are going to talk about visual scanning, it is moving the eye or using the saccadic eye movement to search for an object in the environment. Okay, what's going to take now? Okay. Alright, nice. Can I see it still a So visual scanning is uh, searching for an object in front of the patient or in the room or in the table and it is very important skill for the vision. Secondly, we will come to the visual attention and which is, which is uh, the selection of a region of interest in the visual field. Uh, 
And uh, as an OTs, we uh, know we have uh, different types of attention, like focused attention, sustained attention, is uh, alternative attention and divided attention, and all of these skills are essential for uh, building cognitive skills. Now we will come to unilateral neglect. Uh, sometimes it's called hemispatial neglect, hemiagnosia, hemineglect, unilateral neglect, spatial neglect. Uh, sometimes it's called uh, hemi-attention uh, syndrome or neglect syndrome. Hemi-attention, it is a neurological condition which uh, means a damage of one of the hemispheres in the brain uh, which, co uh, which cause a deficit in the attention or awareness towards one side of the body or uh, in the environment. It is defined by inability of the person to process uh, and perceive the information or the stimulus on one side of the body or the environment. Uh, usually the unilateral neglect, it is a cognitive condition. It is usually a combined with cognitive impairment. Uh, in the severe cases of the unilateral neglect, the person will act like if one side of the body is not existed. Usually the spatial, hemispatial neglect, it is caused by damage or lesion in the dominant parietal uh, temporal loop. We have three types of unilateral neglect. There is personal neglect, which the patient neglects only his body but doesn't neglect the environment uh, or the The other type is the patient neglects only the environment and he's aware of his uh, body and doesn't neglect the affected side. The third type, which is the most severe one, it is extra personal neglect. The patient neglects the environment and his body as well. We will come to the assessment. For visual scanning and visual uh, attention, almost we have the same assessment for both of them. For visual attention uh, assessment, uh, for adults, we use uh, the star cancellation or the cancellation uh, test. Uh, for a star cancellation test, you ask the patient to mark on the small stars in the paper and you give the patient time to search in the paper. After the patient finish, you check the patient uh, marks if he neglected or uh, left one side of the paper. You can see uh, the result of this one. Uh, the patient left the whole uh, left side without any marks, so the patient have left side neglected. Uh, there are many assessments for visual attention. Uh, one of them, the clock uh, drawing assessment. I will show you a video of that. For the severe cases, uh, for example, the patient could eat one side of the plate and dressing, dress only one side of the body and forget about the other one. We'll come to the difference between visual field and hemi-attention and how we can differentiate between them. Uh, usually the hemi-attention are combined with cognitive impairment and usually the patient doesn't know that he have a problem or he doesn't understand that he have a uh, for the visual field, many times the patient doesn't have uh, big or severe cognitive impairment and uh, the patient can understand that he have a problem. And because of that, usually the treatment for visual field has more result or more good prognosis than the hemi-attention. Uh, in the scanning, usually the visual field uh, problem patients, they can scan in the blind side by moving the eyes or moving the head. Uh, but on the other side, the hemi-attention, they only search symmetrical way, uh, only they search in the unaffected side. 
For the visual field patient, they try or they attempt to search in the blind side, but in the hemi attention, they don't try. Uh, the button of the search for the visual field it is organized, but in the hemi attention it is non-organized. For the visual field patients, when they search in the paper or the items, they recheck if they did the task well. Uh, in the other side, the hemi attention, they don't recheck the accuracy of the task, and they seem that they are confident about the results. Field patient, the time of the task depends on the level of the task, but in the hemi attention, no matter is the difficulty of the task. Uh, for the hemi attention, no matter how uh, difficult is the task, they always finish quickly and they seem very confident. Uh, now we will come uh, to the treatment. Uh, as we usually say, uh, treatment always it has uh, two. We have two approaches, the compensatory approach and the rest restorative approach. In the restorative approach, usually we can use sensory input on the affected site to encourage the patient to use the affected site. Uh, also, when you are giving the patient any task, it's better to provide the auditory stimulation with visual cues during the exercise. Uh, also, during the exercises, usually it's better to place all the items the patient needs on the affected side, so the patient search on that area. Also, uh, we use uh, visual scanning exercises, and it is better to give the, uh, give the patient the chance to use other senses, uh, like we can use a touch uh, sensation to feel if there is any item missing that the patient couldn't see on the table. Also, when you are talking to the patient, it is better to stand in the neglected side, so you encourage the patient to search on that area. Also, uh, during exercises, we can use mirror, uh, and it is better to put the mirror in the angle of the uh, non-affected side. Uh, when you use the mirror, for example, in dressing activity, uh, and put it on the uh, unaffected angle, the patient will see the whole image. The patient will know if he left any part of the cloth without dressing or forget any part of his body. So we can use flashing light or uh, moving light uh, on the neglected side. It can also stimulate the attention to the affected side. And also the CIMT therapy or constraint induced movement therapy, it can help also to reduce the neglect to the affected side. Then we will come to the compensatory techniques. Uh, compensatory techniques when the exercises doesn't benefit the patient. In this case, it is very important to educate the patient and the caregiver about the patient's uh, problem and neglection. And uh, also, uh, we should emphasize on visual scanning and eye movement, and we can use uh, other senses. Uh, we can use also other senses like touch, for example, putting straps or uh, any sensible material on the table or the plate. For example, in the table, you can use a strap which has sensation. The patient can use his hand to reach at the end of the table to, to know that is the, this is the end of the table or also you can use it to any other uh, thing the patient uses. Now I will show you a video about visual neglection exercise or treatment. And I'm going to place the golf tees on this white rectangle and there are going to be 10 of them all together. Your job is to find all 10 golf tees. They can be on the right side of the board or the left side of the board. Mm -hmm. Now before we begin, I'd like you to take your hand and just trace around my rectangle so you get an idea of how big it is and where all the T's could be. Okay. Have you reached the end? No. Okay, keep going. Oh, there you go. Okay. There we go. All right, all right. All right. Excellent. Okay. Right. So the golf T's can be anywhere in this workspace. Oh, okay. All right, looking for the T's, remember to look to your right and to your left, okay? Mm. Are you ready? Ready. I'm just going to put them on here quickly. Right. 
for listening i hope you benefit from it if anybody have any question i am here and have a good day thank you